Hello and welcome everybody to how to draw a tank. This is some uh, nice focal point material that has been originally used uh, during class as a live demo during the summer class of 2018. Um, we tried to record everything and this is the result of it. Primarily done of course for our students that have uh, live free access to these videos. And of course, if you are, you know, curious how, you know, I speak, how we teach, how we like, do our materials in class, then this, I guess, provides a nice brief insight. Of course, it's still, you know, nothing compared to what we actually share in class, doing this live, um, responding to to questions of students in a, in a, you know, very effective way, sharing our knowledge at the same time is of course uh, unparalleled and something that we really enjoy to do because we of course have this um, uh, interaction that is just so uh, so priceless and it's so fun to do as well of course um, here we are going to not only well the title is of is uh, is how to draw a tank um, but there is a lot of aspects that I want to uh, to cover with this one, right? Um, this has been an exercise. This is actually a design exercise where, you know, before, you know, we all know like what character artists do before they actually design characters. You know, you take anatomy classes, right? You study the anatomy of humans. You, you, you check out, you know, their poses, how light is shining on the muscles, how it is being viewed. Um, and you make tons of sketches and studies of that. And I like to approach design, of course, in a very narrowed down way to see design as design without, you know, without discriminating if it's a, if it's a vehicle, a character or a piece of environment. And this is how this exercise was born before we actually design in my, uh, um, my class uh, and I covered the perspective and hardware design class we actually go and draw real life vehicles it trains our uh, proportions our you know how we relate to to shapes how they are being foreshortened in perspective and it trains our design sensibility right <clears throat> what that, that what that means is a lot of students that uh, take on design hardware design in particular for the first time their visual right library is not rich enough to handle the amount of information that you need to depict a realistic vehicle and therefore it is very important in my opinion to tackle studies like this first of real life existing vehicles in class i <clears throat> explain it in an advanced way that doing these studies is more than just seeing what you're drawing. I don't want the students to just see what they're drawing. That is why you can see that the, t the tank that I have as main reference on my screen is actually in a different perspective than the drawing that I'm currently working on. So I am not forcing myself to copy one on one how the tanks looks like. I instead digest the shapes and realign them to my perspective grid, right? Of course, you we will need additional um, images to help you out so you get the proportions. My big help was that I've seen this tank in real life and I also have scale models made out of it because I have this extra passion. However, when I'm working in an industry, I have to sometimes design things that I have uh, less relation uh, re less relation with, right? Meaning that I have to do extra research and show the amount of passion that I, of course, have for uh, military tanks like uh, like here. So, and you know, it is a very good exercise in my opinion. I think. Before you jump into to vehicle design, I think doing these on a daily basis will just kickstart your abilities and boost your design abilities, right? Um, again, I am killing here multiple birds with one stone with a, with a study like this. I am 
uh, sharpening up my drawing skills, right? So my coordination, I'm sharpening up my fundamental skills, meaning proportions, uh, shape, relationship, uh, perspective, all that is, you know, being uh, taken into account here. And I'm forging that skill here and my design sensibility, understanding and redrawing everything that I see on the real life tank helps me to understand how design and complexity is being uh, taken care of on a real life vehicle. What I often see with uh, beginning aspiring concept artists that are designing vehicles, they sometimes they don't put enough details or the detail doesn't make much sense, which, you know, doesn't follow the whole design language, meaning that I sometimes see different wheels where, you know, the wheels could be kept the same. Sometimes I see, you know, different kind of screws, different kind of details that don't follow up necessarily with the rest of the design language. Uh, these things are extensively talked in class and really hammered down through our students because it is not only applicable to vehicles but everything that we are designing as concept artists and this is a key to make something eye pleasing right having that relation with the real world because in the end you're always referencing back to uh, to our existing world and doing it in a creative way but by sticking to the rules of uh, of design philosophy of course which is uh, in my opinion uh, a portion of believable functionality aesthetics and consistency and yeah these are very important uh, factors to remember and um, things that we explain and do exercises on in class <clears throat> So yeah, for the students that are uh, uh, watching this, of course, I have to apologize for the massive delay for not releasing these earlier. Uh, we are still struggling with, you know, the available manpower to us of running focal point, but we are getting there. <clears throat> I was uh, in the end also very happy with, uh, with the results and we were very happy and happy and lucky with our summer term students that were very disciplined uh, the care that i've seen in uh, most of these drawings was just beautiful to see to me so <clears throat> i uh, my method of doing studies designs um, in here as like you can see here is you can see that i when i'm doing the first pass of drawing I really don't care much about uh, the lines right I'm not forging my lines in a beautiful uh, aesthetical way meaning that my liner is still not presentable and aesthetically pleasing to the uh, to the viewer this is just laying down out my proportions and my proportions are still lacking I think the turret is a little bit too high. Uh, yeah, the shapes are still a little bit off, but as we continue, I will try to fix that. And it is something that you will take for granted. It is harder than you think. When you do one of these exercises, you will see that keeping the proportions like really one-on-one -on -one is harder than you think. But in the end, it will train you. Um, to become a better designer in the end because you train the proportion the proportions you train the real life proportions of what vehicles have right the scaling the everything right because <clears throat> one good example is you know if you look at um at you know things like the hatch in the front and the 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 gun sticking out of the main hull um, that gives you a sense of scale and design complexity, meaning that if you are designing or making a bigger vehicle, you would not increase also the size of the hatch and the size of this machine gun. They would all still maintain, you know, its same size. Why? Well, because a hatch only needs to be that big for a person to get in. Same for the machine gun, right? It is uh, basically a portable 
uh, mobile machine gun that you know also can be carried by one person but instead it's being uh, you know um, put on a tank and so that is also a very important factor to mention that sometimes people redesigning or making a new design based on a, a real design they also increase the scale of all these details but that's the wrong approach most of the time a lot of these details they stay the same size right for example a lot of tanks also have like toolboxes and like shovels on their side you know um if you would make like a bigger version of that tank you would not increase the size of the shovel right so you have to play in a different way you instead increase the complexity bigger vehicles have an increased complexity right <clears throat> everything would stay the same the same size well not everything but the details that are you know we interact with as humans will stay the same so you instead then take care of the complexity you know more screws maybe more toolboxes or a different kind of toolbox um, maybe it will be uh, there will be now room for a shovel and a pickaxe for example you know um, so very very important aspects because again with my last workshop in in prague um i've seen very nice drawings of people they had very good um, drawing abilities but they were making like their own version of a design that i briefed them to do and the scaling was just off right the scaling was completely off and that again has to do uh, with proportions it trains the proportions if you do real life studies like this <clears throat> You're um, really nailing down the proportions as uh, as best as I can. Uh, the perspective grid is a pre-made perspective grid that I did with um, Carapace. So I'm sorry that I'm not showing the progress of that. Um, but you can download Carapace, I think, still from, um, from the Epic website. It is an Epic tool. Um, I mean, it is an Epic tool, but it's also a tool done by Epic, by Epic Games. Very handy, easy to use. You open up files and you can reverse back uh, the perspective on top of it. Or you can just make your new perspective grid. It gives you everything. You can make three-point perspectives. Uh, it gives you a horizon line automatically. Uh, very easy to use. We are now already 13 minutes in and I still didn't begin on my title line drawing on top. And what does it mean? That means for me that sometimes doing a study is even harder than designing. Because when you're making a study, you have to keep, you know, the proportions 100%. So I'm still calculating if everything is in, in the right place, right? Um my main reference is on a from a diff from a completely different camera angle so i will have um kind of a struggle when i look at the tank you know and where each every part begins because the foreshortening is also completely different on on my drawing from my camera angle than you know the camera angle from the uh, from the photograph and again, uh, supporting images will really help you a great deal with that. <clears throat> so uh, some technical, um, maybe some you know informative technical um, you know knowledge. Um, I'm here making a study of the T thirty four seventy six tank, um, Soviet tank from the Second World War mass produced uh, throughout the war this is the early version with the 76 turret meaning um, you know it is called the t-34-76 because of its uh, 76 millimeter main gun um, don't confuse you know the millimeters being the length of the gun but the barrel of the gun right we are here talking about the caliber not the length so it is a 76 millimeter caliber main cannon 
The turret was a very crampy small one, two-man turret. Um, it was a very effective tank indeed. Uh, when it first appeared on the battlefield, it shocked the Germans and they had for a while no answer to it. Very effective, uh, made in big numbers. Uh, that is why it was lacking also in its uh, quality, but that, that was done on purpose, right? That was done on purpose because uh, the Soviets were more about quantity than quality. The war, the, the game of their war was, you know, outnumbering um, the enemy and not outmaneuvering them or outthinking them, right? It's just a sheer force that in the end also, um, you know, won the war. Of course, with all respect, I think, you know, there were still, you know, strateg great strategists, great strategists going on on both sides. Uh, but I'm just talking about the design philosophy of this tank in particular. Um, yeah, the, the later variant is the T-34-85. Um, they ended up producing that tank even beyond the Second World War. Um, if I'm not mistaken, even up till the 60s, uh, with some upgrades here and there. Uh, in some third world countries, uh, this tank is actually still in use, which is pretty amazing. Um, so yeah. Very rough, very, uh, you know, uh, very crude design, you know, so it's it's simple to make, you know, Soviet factories were pumping like three thousands of them uh, per month. And again, you know why I'm giving this knowledge, it really uh, helps me to immerse myself in what I'm drawing, what I'm doing, right? I am understanding the object that I'm, uh, that I'm drawing here. Sorry for my phone, by the way just silenced it <clears throat> so yeah <clears throat> and now you guys can see that I started you know working on my uh, finer line drawing on top of the of the rough drawing so It's uh, usually not important where I start the finer line drawing, but this is the part where I start to really care about my lines, right? This is always what I tell my uh, students to do, you know. Uh, fundamentals, drawing abilities are something that should never be taken for granted, right? I am a big fan of, you know, using tools to my uh, disposal. Um, photographs, 3D tools, all kinds of tools that might, you know, help you, you know, being a shortcut for your designs and illustrations. But man, if you don't have those fundamentals, you can use all the tools you want and you'll still have shitty designs, right? And we sometimes see that uh, coming to, uh, we, we, we see the results of that, right? People that first master the tools but not their fundamentals, not their design sensibility. <clears throat> In the end, knowing how to draw, knowing how to sketch, knowing your fundamentals and perspective lets you to be completely free in your head and transfer your ideas directly onto paper without relying on any fancy tools, right? And that is in the end what we all um, want, in my opinion. I, uh, I say it always often, often enough, you know, uh, it happens so often when you're like in a real production environment, you're sitting somewhere in a meeting or, you know, your first day at work and your tablet is still not ready or something. They're still setting up your workstation and you will have situations where you really want, want to really rely on your fundamental skills and you will be relying on them, you know, even throughout when you are making use of fancy tools because 
then your work can become even better and even more accurate. Having a 3D blockout of a vehicle that you designed, drawing on top of that, for example, will give you more accuracy in your designs. Whereas you know you'll be able to do it from scratch as well, but now you have these tools that help you out and this then is just the best feeling ever. So instead of relying on those tools, you're, you know, only increasing the the accuracy of your of your designs and illustrations that is exactly what we're doing here as well <clears throat> playing again with the proportions as you can see moving some parts and again this is the beauty of digital drawing um reinforcing that here uh, in these examples that i can just select lines easily and to move them around, erase them clearly without any traces, um, and that gives a very, very good, um, very good and accurate result. Something that you sometimes that I sometimes miss when uh, drawing on paper, and I still draw on paper because I love the physical feel, and everything has its advantages and disadvantages, right? Uh, digitally I have more control, more accuracy, it kind of like feels more mechanical, more controlled, more planned out, whereas um, when doing it traditionally you always automatically have this nice texture going on of the paper and when you make a mistake with ink, you know, that's it, like you don't want to make like, you know, you can't kind of erase it, so you have to work around it and count on your creativity to find a way out to you know fix the mistake in a different way and that is also a very good exercise that is why i also um, encourage not to give up on traditional media so use everything to your disposal and embrace design as a whole thing right <clears throat> Professionally, I, I don't draw traditionally, but you know, for my for my own, when I'm like chilling out on a on a Sunday, um, or when I'm traveling and I just have my sketchbook, then I, I rely on that. I just you know sketch out ideas. I'm inking them in, and you know, a lot of fun. Basically, you're like a kid, right? Like I actually never grew up. I'm like, instead of being adult, I extended <laughs> my childhood. Uh, that's kind of how I see it. Not saying that I'm not serious at times. I mean, I think I am. I hope I am. But I think kids have this nice curiosity aspect about them. And it's sometimes such a shame that a lot of adults just lose it, right? Because they're being suppressed by, you know, financial problems. And, oh, I need to finish college. And then I need to find a job. And then I need to work from 9 to 5. And, um, yeah. I guess that's our civilization, but, um, you know, you can try to be different, you know. We are li living in the most peaceful times, you know, that history, um, since the since our humanity began, in the, right, that's what I always hear. Um, you know, not saying that, you know, we live in a perfect world, but saying that if you, if you are, you know, from... From Europe or America you probably didn't experience hunger or war so you know what is stopping you to try and, and do what you want right the worst what can happen is you know you land a job at McDonald's and you know that's it but at least you tried you know you, you know what uh, uh, what it took you to try and then you know you work temporary at McDonald's and then you try something else so you know uh, I always say you live only once. Try everything you you want to do first before you know. Uh, you do the safe thing that every everyone expects you to do. You know. So. <clears throat> Here you see that I'm making the machine gun a little bit different than on the reference image. On the reference image, there's, if I'm mistake, not mistaken, there's actually no machine gun. And it's being like twisted upside down, which is the wrong position, by the way. 
So because I've seen this tank in real life multiple times, I've studied it uh, thoroughly, um, I, I know the shapes by heart. And I know that in this example, in this example here on the reference image, the, that gun turret in the, in the hall, uh, that gun mantlet that of the machine gun is being twisted like more than 90 degrees upwards for some reason. <clears throat> Uh, I guess it's done for safety reasons or something, just to, you know, um, make sure and make everybody know that it is out of order, right? Sometimes, like, they, they paint the tip of the gun uh, red or orange, or they cover it with a piece of cloth to um, show or indicate that the tank is not in use. Or actually, also, they protect it from, you know, oxidization, that it could also be a, be a thing. I think that's why they do it, you know, to communicate to everybody that the tank is not in use and like a, it's like a museum piece. So, but in this case, we are making an active duty tank. I am including this one to my project as well, 1952, uh, where I uh, reimagined the Second World War. Again, not that I love war, but uh, since it is part of our history and I think doing, you know, uh, historical moments and putting that into entertainment is very interesting and yeah of course my motto is you know play war don't make war you know we as you know if you're like a boy you know you you, you are boyish and i was definitely boyish i love playing with lego i love making you know um playing uh, you know war games with uh, my friends and you know nobody of us was actually desiring for war it's just you know i guess Every boy wants to, you know, uh, you know, loves loves cars, and you know, loves, you know, in my, um, in my example, it was, you know, tanks and military gear and engine sounds and you know all that. And um, yeah, World War Two being a very iconic uh, moment in our history where technology exaggerated. I am reimagining that in my own project where it didn't end in 1945, but it escalated further. America never invaded um, uh, Europe. So, you know, kind of an excuse that Germany had more resources available to keep on waging war on the Eastern Front, which was in the end the major conflict, right? The major conflict and the most casualties were on the Eastern Front between Germany and Russia where kind of like Poland was stuck in the middle and it was most of the time the the battlefield of uh, Europe at war. Most people think it's France, but it's actually not. <clears throat> so yeah, and I'm including that, you know, uh, in my project. Uh, if you're familiar with my uh, with with that setting, it is um, kind of like alternative, you know, so it's science fiction, but still very grounded in the World War II technology. And I'm designing there all kinds of vehicles, you know, from the grounded vehicles like this tank that really existed up to the more crazy alternative setting vehicles like, you know, walking tanks, mechs and all kinds of exotic weaponry. Reimagining what would happen, you know, how crazy we would go with technology. And of course, you know, Max would probably not exist anyway, but I, I'm doing that for the entertainment value, you know. So, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I'm testing something out. I think I was um, showing something. Because again, this is recording from class, right? So, yeah. And it has been already like six months ago that I'm now recording the audio on top of it. So I don't remember everything what I was doing, but yeah. Yeah, some, uh, some, some other knowledge that I can share here, not knowledge, but um, uh, information. This has been um, recorded in uh, Half of it, I think, was done uh, real time. Oh, no, I think, like, no, I think it's uh, sped up, like, one and a half times. 
just to keep it like you know under two hours or under one hour and 30 minutes right I don't want uh, I don't want this video tutorial to be crazy long because you know I uh, even though I'm enjoying making tutorials it's sometimes very tiring to talk to yourself for four hours I rather do that in front of class where I actually you know have students to talk to uh, where they can respond and where we can you know both tackle problems uh, so this is more of a walk through of course so yeah so you can see that every line that I make is very is taken care of right when I have the edge of the tank I just don't draw one line I study very um, yeah, in a in a, I, I study very carefully how the panels are being divided, right? And I'm using different line thicknesses to indicate uh, the material, my bevels, my bends. I'm not using one thickness all over the place to indicate what I'm drawing because that would give me a, a very fake drawing result. And this is not, you know, to say that you should draw like me, because drawing, especially drawing, and of course painting, is subject to a personal style. So you can never draw or paint like Richard Smith, and you know, I will be never be able to draw like uh, Feng Zhu, because every it's like your hand of writing. You have your own character. You have your own personality. And with painting and drawing, you forge that throughout the years, and in the end, you come up with your own reinterpretation how to make your lines in a realistic way. And that is exactly uh, the result. My drawing style is a result of, uh, of training uh, and very stubborn practice, and making sure, always making sure my lines are as accurate as I can. And you can even adapt the same, the same learning, but you'll see your style will be always different from mine. And that is actually very cool, in my opinion. That everyone has its own creative way of tackling and representing reality. Or when it comes to concept art, your own ideas. Always that artistic value. Even though the style of concept artists can be a little bit like, you know, repetitive, like the style wise, like the ideas differ, but style wise the same, like you see, like, especially back in the day when everybody was, you know, uh, doing fine liners and markers, um, everybody had that same style of execution, but the ideas were different. And sometimes you couldn't tell which artist was who, unless you really know the person's work then of course yes which again brings me back to the fact that you know yes everybody has his own style and it's an uh, it's an artistic aspect even though concept artists are you know more about design and you know design comes first and we only use the artistic skills to present our ideas and in the end there is a lot of artistic value in concept art as well in my opinion the way you paint the way you make your lines the way you suggest the details which is sometimes necessary when you are short on time is uh, are all artistic aspects <clears throat> making the details so these are the 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 vision slits which have like uh like protection caps on them two of them they can both open so it's a hatch and on top of the hatch you have these two um pr protection um, uh, caps captions these these protection hoodies that go on top of the vision slits right so it is very important to not only see what you draw, but understand what you're drawing, so you don't misinterpret it and come up with something completely else, right? <clears throat> I repeat that over and over again in class, you know. Care about your lines, care about your proportions, and immerse yourself enough so you understand 
what you're drawing, not only see what you're drawing, right? And I must have there cut a little bit of the recording. Um, not everything was drawn in one go. So. Sometimes a man just needs to go to the toilet or, you know, it's thirsty. So I put the video on pause and then I continue. So that's why the screen jumps sometimes like this. My apologies for that. Here I'm defining the third ring. Actually I'm even adding more details than the original drawing just to you know increase a little bit of the complexity. Um, the nice excuse about you know the T34 that I always can you know use is you know even if this drawing isn't you know super well made in perspective like I can see some perspective issues on those uh, vision slits on the hoodies the caps uh, the protection thingies um, that we just talked about earlier they are slightly off in perspective I'm not changing it on uh, on purpose because these things were so crudely made that some sometimes you know a lot of these welding lines and materials were you know really offset right they uh, they really didn't care much about you know their aestheticals and uh, the quality about their vehicles you know as long as it had an engine it has armor it has a gun go next right that was the philosophy and you know they they lasted only for six months anyway uh, because they calculated it on, on average, uh, a tank only lasts for six months on a heavy battlefield anyway. So why would you make something that lasts for years or even that lasts something for seven months? No, you just make a, a short term vehicle, right? So, yeah, uh, in some cases, in this case, I will, you know, make make this one that it has lasted for years, you know, and it, you know, had some... Uh, maintenance going on and of course there are plenty of tanks and i think that you know lasted for years on the battlefield but uh, on average a couple of months right a couple of months before it you know got uh, destroyed so yeah oh that line is really out of perspective i can see that now the thick line, the thick gray line that goes, you know, through the whole picture, that's my horizon line. So. You can, uh, you can have like a point of relation. Drawing this study helped me a lot, so even though I have um, experience making and designing vehicles, it is always a great reminder for me to do uh, vehicle studies like this. The details that, you know, I um, redraw are sometimes details that I don't come up with on my own. It's always a richer experience to make something that exists for real and make a proper study out of it. Here I can see that my fender, my frontal fender that I'm drawing now is not really on point with, um, with the fender uh, reference image, but it doesn't matter. I know also that there were different types of fenders used on this tank. So the shape doesn't really need to be one on one. Or I'm just, you know, giving myself excuses because um, I always tell my students to be really, you know, accurate and one-on-one. -on -one. And here I'm giving an example of, you know, that I'm not doing it always as well. So, yeah. <clears throat> Towing hook. So two towing hooks on the front, um, very useful in, uh, you know, on Russian terrain, 
especially during fall when the rains are starting to um, become uh, a, a frequent thing on almost a daily basis the terrain starts to get muddy and uh, you need these towing hooks to you know uh, pull out tanks when they're like really stuck in the mud even though you know tanks are really made you know traverse all kinds of terrain and the tracks in that uh, sense are really helping a great deal because what happens with tracks with tracks you have you know it distributes the weight nicely of the of the tank and you're actually like creating your own path right you're creating your own uh, road with uh, with tracks basically and you know that is uh, that is a great benefit that's why tracks are being used right <clears throat> Uh, it's sometimes amazing to see, you know, what kind of terrain uh, tanks are being able to uh, to pass. Just blows to, blows my mind. Uh, believe it or not, sometimes they would get stuck and they would need, uh, I guess, you know, another tank to, you know, pull it out. Um, that is, of course, tricky because the engine capabilities are, you know, um, they only go so far. And usually these things, they already had trouble, you know, um, pro uh, you know, propelling or you know, powering their own weight. But if they also needed to drag, you know, another tank's weight, then of course, well, you you have a problem, and that will, you know, destroy the the gearing system, you know, of 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 the tank. You know, the the, the teething will, you know, go to uh, go to scrap because of the increased weight that you're you know you're putting more stress on all the gearing and all the mechanisms inside of the engine and the propulsion and everything so yeah again a lot of nerdy uh a nerdy talk here but again uh, i encourage you to do that always when designing anything not only tanks oh in this case it's just a study but still so yeah how to draw a tank right um Again, it really comes down to being very careful, right? Nothing comes, you know, fast with too many shortcuts for free. I really advise, you know, when you're starting out with concept design, drawing, draw objects from the real life, draw something, you know, that you know you're going to relate back to when you're going to make your own designs. And just forget about shortcuts at the, at the start, you know. In the end, you want to have passion in it anyway, right? There needs to be some passion in when you're drawing on your own everything. Because um, in the end, we do this job because we uh, we love it, right? I never heard a concept art saying, you know, oh, I became a concept artist because for the monies, you know. Uh, you know, you have to speak to a banker or something or maybe a good lawyer if it's, you know, if you're about the monies. Uh, of course, you can make a very nice, decent living as a concept designer, but it's the passion first, right? It's the passion for the job first. And of course, you know, um, eating twice a day is uh, pretty nice. So, um, and having a house and everything is also, uh, you know, to live in is also very nice. So, of course, you know, making a living is super important. Um, but yeah. Mixing the two, you know, passion with the work, uh, you'll have, I think, a better situation than the richest banker that, you know, maybe even hates his job, is doing crazy hours, but has more money. But, you know, so what? So what if you don't have even time to spend it, right? Um, but, yeah. And, of course, there are some people that love being a banker, so, I'm, you know, I'm not disrespecting anybody. Just saying, you know, concept, Just I'm just talking to people that, are willing to and want to be a concept designer but are a banker instead and now they wish they you know did something else so if you're watching this remember it's never too late you know i also had jobs that you know were shitty to me um i worked you know in a procurement sector i worked in the office had to wear like a suit and tie i also before that i worked in a logistics company you know carrying cargo checking trucks um um, I work in construction, you know, all kinds of jobs, and yeah, this one is the best I've ever had. Being a concept artist and now being able to share my knowledge uh, at, you know, at Focal Point is um, definitely um, a beautiful thing to do. 
and having great people to work with, right? Uh, together with my friend, who was also a concept artist, uh, we founded the school. Uh, very good to, you know, always have also somebody that watches your back. You watch his, you watch his back, and something that I always, you know, advise uh, doing to find like a partner in crime uh, that you can count on in your professional life. It's a nice bonus to have. And of course, when it comes to the school, primarily we do it for, you know, the, the students, the people uh, that, you know, are willing to become a concept artist. Uh, the idea of Focal Point was again born out of the necessity and the lacking aspect that we had when we were younger and were willing, you know, to go to school to boost our uh, our knowledge and our uh, learning curve, but we were unable to do so. Unable to do so in uh, in Europe, there was no proper concept art school or any school that is remotely connected, you know, to the craft of concept design. There were some game art related courses. But they were very broad, and in the end, they didn't teach you, you know, uh, much. They did not cover design, that's for sure. Just, you know, how to use Photoshop, how to draw, how to, you know, texture, how to 3D model, you know, the basic things. But, you know, um, and, you know, the teachers were, you know, not industry veterans, right? That is always something telling, you know, if your teacher is somebody that, you know, doesn't work in the field, it's not like a not an industry professional, how can you then, you know, take example of, of, of him or her, right? How can you then rely on the information he is uh, giving to you if he is not working anymore in the field for, you know, several years? So, um, yeah, at Focal Point we have, uh, we have all that and we only strive to get better. Because our students need to be uh, get better. We can only succeed if our students succeed in the end. So, and again, I hope that with this video uh, that was done live in class, you can you can have uh, also a, a, an an idea of you know things are done. And again, you know, ex students, if you are watching this, of course. Um, Again, I'm sorry that it took so long. I will try to, you know, now that I have more time, upload them uh, as fast as I can so you guys have access to it. <clears throat> Here I am starting to work on the tracks, all right? And they were the hardest part. That was, you know, I see every track as, you know, a separate segment put into 3D space and I'm treating it as such, you know, I'm putting enough care so they look, um, so I communicate all the visual information, right? I am putting the equal amount of care in everything. If a shape is super complex, then so be it. I am just drawing that in, right? Um, sure, I'm doing after all some shortcuts, but the, the the, the tank threads that are facing the camera the most and are closer closest to the camera I'm putting there the most amount of uh, of love right to depict them so Again, making always the second segment is always tricky because there's a lot of foreshortening going on. You really have to indicate on all, uh, on the whole of the panel that, you know, I'm changing the angle downwards. And it's so tricky, you know, sometimes to keep the perspective, to keep the proportions. But, you know, it is in the end a very good exercise. Sometimes there is nothing, I think there is, when it comes to hardware design, there's nothing harder than, you know, making segments like this, you know that interconnect with one another, that have this, uh, that have this feeling, you know, that they're, you know, belonging, but like bending, and that it still needs to go, still needs to look nice when you're like, zoom in or zoom out. 
here I'm making the other segment. You guys are not hearing the same amount of noise, but it's really like I'm inside of a helicopter, so I'm sorry for that. <laughs> it is, uh, it is my laundry. Sometimes I have to wash my clothes, and yeah, I'm I'm at home now, not in my studio, so. Yeah, I'm still like looking back at the segments and they're still, you know, I'm not super happy with them, you know. I could have I could have done even a better job at them. It's uh Well there are multiple ways to approach it, you know. You can also like make a flat drawing of, you know, the pattern that is uh on the tracks and then you can, you know, copy paste it, you know, according to you know the perspective. But I went kind of like hardcore mode on it and I was drawing each and every segment by hand. Um Kind of also to simulate, you know, how I would do it uh, if it was a traditional drawing, because then you cannot play with, you know, the perspective tool and, you know, just copy and paste patterns on it. Uh, trains my um, sensibility how to make the same shape from a different angle and perspective and still make it look nicely and still make it work. Yeah, those tracks will take a long while. <clears throat> and yeah, while these tracks are going to take care of themselves... By the way, I got rid of the noise, basically what I did, I just... Really had to cut this uh, this recording in half, um, stop recording for a while, uh, wait for my laundry to finish, and now everything should be more silent, except for my phone right now. It is going off, um, so let's silence that completely. In the end, I want to talk more about you know your drawing capabilities, right? You might you know watching a video. And actually getting to draw is a, is a completely different aspect. So I'm also here to like kind of like motivate yourself and to establish a certain mindset. So the mindset that you have to have for these kinds of drawings, and I think it's a fundamental skill to have for every concept artist, is to build up that mentality of caring enough, right? One thing is, you know, forging your drawing ability. But the other way is definitely, definitely the care. And throughout your journey as a concept artist, you will see that your drawing capabilities will improve. The coordination will get better. You'll be better at eyeballing your perspective because basically your brain is such a beautiful, complex um, uh, organ. Or, yeah, I guess it's an organ, right? Uh, that it... It trains itself nicely to when you repeat a single, a, a certain, um, a, a certain act like drawing, you become better and faster at it because your neurons they, they, they find a better shortcut to perform a certain task, right? Like that's why we probably don't think about you know we don't actually think about how to take one step after one another. Um, I'm basically describing walking, right? You just think about the destination where you go and you just walk. Same with concept art, right? You just think of the end result that you want to achieve in this drawing and the rest after a while it take care will take care of itself, right? Less and less you'll be taxed by perspective, by keeping the proportions, by keeping the line weight intact. And this kind of training is, you know, some people need a certain 
disciplinary push. Some people need to, you know, be shown, you know, the, the certain shortcuts or, you know, the certain amount of knowledge that we all provide at um, the focal point, right? So, um, yeah, definitely uh, important to remember the kind of mentality you're sitting down, right? If you're, if you achieve in a moment that, you know, you're done with a drawing, it's better than to take a break than to force yourself through the struggle. Because a line drawing is actually a, a beautiful craft where you cannot cheat that much, right? If I see that somebody is becoming lazy throughout its work, throughout their drawing, I can tell. And if somebody has lesser knowledge about certain elements within the, when in this case, you know, within um, the hardware design, then I also, I can just tell. You know, if somebody uh, lacks, you know, the perspective at some areas, you also can tell, you know, you cannot hide it behind some nice fog or some nice reflections with some nice moody scene because it's more of a, it's more of a schematic drawing, right? So, um, yeah, all these aspects are um, very important to remember. Also, um, never, never underestimate, you know, the fact that you do have to train your uh, coordination, right? You might have one thing in your head, but the transfer ratio of you having something in your head and putting that physically on a canvas is always going to be, uh, is always going to be different. There's always going to be some difference between what's in your head and what you're trying to put out on the canvas. And, um, you know, with time, that gap will becoming will become smaller. But I don't know anybody that, you know, is able to put everything 100% of what's in their head on the canvas, right? There is always some struggle. There is always some ratio, some, some rendement, I guess, that you, that you lose in your final output image. Here you see that, you know, while I was drawing the patterns, I can now, looking back at it, I see, you know, my perspective issues and I think I'll fix them. So, of course, don't forget to check out the uh, part two where I am rendering this tank. So basically I take the material knowledge, um, I set up a certain lighting and according to that, I am rendering the whole tank, so that will be part two. Uh, it might be out by the time that, that you are watching this. Um, usually I do like a week in between, you know, the release. So if you just, uh, if you're just watching this tutorial, you know, on day after it's released, you might wait for, wait for a week or something before the next part is out. <clears throat> So yeah. Benefiting from the fact that uh, this is a digital drawing, so I can copy and paste certain segments, uh, saving time, right? I started off with the tracks uh, pretty soon. Well, not soon, I mean, we're already an hour in, but uh, Usually I would say, you know, uh, the more important factor are the wheels. But uh, in this scenario, when it's a tank, I think the tracks are the most, uh, most complicated part to draw. Um, also, this tank has, uh, um, you know, a, a one, two segment. So some tanks have, you know, that all the threads are the same. This tank has, you know, every second um, uh, tank thread is the same. So it basically consists of uh, two different tank tracks all the way, if you look closely, right? One is the bigger one where the pins are going in with the holes and on the sides. And the other one is just a smaller tank track in between. Also, I think the Russians did it to just save up on material again. Um, 
again, um, the thing with this one is that we also have, um, you know, that the teething mechanism that go into the gearing wheel, only every second track has that too, right? So not every, not every track is being, you know, synced up with, uh, with the gearing wheel, only, you know, every second. And I guess that's the larger one, right? The larger uh, tank, tank uh, thread has the, has the teeth, has the tooth. It's just one, it's just one uh, piece of metal that you know sticks out. To, you know, get into the wheel to you know uh, to keep to keep the proper tracking. So yeah. Here I have to adjust. Like I copied the segments, as you can see, but I'm keeping everything accurate and uh, as detailed as I can, and according to physics. So the tracks are subject to some sacking, as you can see, right? So I sketched out the wheels on the other layer and being on top of my detailed layer, I can, you know, still be able to um, make those tracks according to how the wheels go. And of course, you know, when these tanks were, you know, having some mileage, uh, the tracks will become, you know, a little bit loose, looser over time. And so, you know, more sacking will occur, right? So the tracks are sacking on, you know, the areas where the where the wheels are not supporting the track basically so that is what I'm trying to simulate here in the end it's all simulation right it's all illusion every drawing every concept you put on the canvas it's uh, it's all illusion basically and that is what we talk in advanced way during our classes as well some things we could talk about in all the classes so if you take you know uh, my class, if you take um, uh, Direct's class, um, or our class, we know because we also run our mutual class, you know, we talk about certain things in all of them. And of course, some things are there that are, you know, only um, specific to the certain topic that we teach. So, yeah, we are very hard on, you know, trying our students to push to the, to the limits. So, you know, you, you are seeing here an example of the easiest tasks, right? We are here, you know, this is like easy mode. We are, you know, just uh, drawing according to prospecting fundamentals, not designing anything yet, but still we are using and putting the same amount of effort and passion as in everything else. <clears throat> this is not design yet. This is not, you know, compositional heavy, uh, you know, thinking. Uh, this is just, you know, warming ourselves up to your design sensibility, perspective, drawing, drawing coordination, proportions, shape, language. Yeah, all of it. it builds up a strong foundation. And I'm so happy that I'm finally able to make um, uh, long-term classes when I am in touch physically with the students. Uh, before I had only experienced doing really short-term workshops and uh, I enjoy uh, CGMA as well, but I really miss the physical aspect. It's uh, such a difference in the learning curve. Um, yeah, the, 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 the rewarding feeling, the satisfaction that you get in return is uh, definitely worth it to keep on doing this. <clears throat> Yeah. Being very anal with the tracks, as you can see. Unbelievable amount of time goes into that. So think of it, right? Like I'm thinking of every single shape in a three-dimensional way. I don't go lazy. Well, you know, I, I'm trying to, you know, make some lines simpler than the others but other than that i am still treating everything in the same way right right i'm not discriminating i'm not putting more focus and more um shape distinction in the turret and around the focal point where you have the cool parts and i don't go you know lazy and uh, suggestive on the tracks i draw everything out as i see it and as it is actually built 
concept art really sometimes uh, well not sometimes but most of the time when you're working on detailed concepts and it's not only again limited to vehicles but <clears throat> you need that visual communication so that's the other thing that we're training here the visual communication the strong communication the believability and the immersion right knowing knowing the function of the vehicle knowing to what time it belongs to what faction and what terrain it was operating that is all part of the immersion right you know where it belongs and that is the kind of passion and careness that you need to develop as a concept designer for every single for every single project you're working on right of course it is a very hard and not always easy because you i also worked on projects that you know are not as close to me or as, uh, are not as relatable to me but it comes down also to being a very effective observer right if you uh, if you work on something for example if you are a lover of dragons and fantasy art but you are being tasked you know you work in the studio and you are being tasked you know to make environment for a modern first person rpg shooter or something um it might not be entirely your thing but try to embrace the fact that the world you know consists of a lot of uh, diverse topics when, when it comes to entertainment try to immerse yourself you know how these fans are feeling if you will you know put yourself in their shoes and try to find the passion in it right <clears throat> making here the side fenders again i could like go for a completely straight line but like i told you guys before these things were not being built perfectly right there are some and over time you know the metal the, the thin metal will bend you know these fenders are you know made out of a lighter thin metal and that is also my way to indicate the material right I'm not just going to use like one line and you know that is my fender no I just really indicate it accurately you know and with my accuracy of this drawing I'm able to indicate my type of material is it the thick armored plate or is it a piece of thin metal that is bendable and it rusts faster and you know you can even indicate rust with a line drawing that is uh, that is also something that um, I always hammer down, you know, uh, in class. It's not only with painting that you can indicate certain things. I can even indicate shadow and light with the light drawing, right? The, the, the fact that I'm using thicker lines on the bottom most of the time and thinner lines on top of my shapes is because I'm faking in the light, right? I'm using line weight to my advantage to, again, uh, simulate uh, and um make an illusion of you know of uh, of light and it gives you a better view of you know depth so here's an example of uh making the shortcuts in the tracks patterns it is not as detailed as you know the frontal tracks but it still has that same information that visual information right and your brain kind of like fills that in automatically so yeah <clears throat> my brush pen uh, I always have this problem in Photoshop where sometimes I just randomly lose sensitivity and it makes a line out of nowhere as you uh, I don't know if you noticed it but yeah sometimes i have it with every every now and then with some update of the wacom driver then it goes away for a while it's uh it's pretty annoying maybe i should just switch to the ipad pro or something i tried it and none of these issues are there it's like it seems like wacom and windows are not like made for one another i don't know but I 
I always struggle with perspective when I'm drawing tracks from this perspective. So here I'm really taxing my brain to think like I'm not normally I'm able to eyeball my perspective. I have no issue. But in this example, it's uh, it's a pain in the ass because there is a lot of um, the, the sloping angle is very is very aggressive from this angle. And of course, there is this amount of foreshortening going on, which I have to keep in mind. So. Yeah, pretty, uh, pretty annoying. But still, I'm I'm trying to put the same amount of uh, amount of care. <clears throat> and using a line thickness again right like i hope you can see that that um, uh, my drawings i'm trying not to use the same amount of thickness uh through my drawing but when i'm making these segments like the lines in those segments where the tank threads are connecting to one another you can see you know the the thicker lines which uh, indicate the the shadow it is also a very useful guideline when i'm going to render this one in color and its full material definition in part two of uh, this tutorial Yeah, thickening the lines again, as you can see. And now even if I squint my eyes, right, I look at this track and it still feels like a track. I still see the segmentation going on, right? Because I knew that with um, this amount of um, complexity in the tracks, you know, you have like a lot of bending going on and the track itself has like a complex pattern i know it will become you know complex and it will become too noisy so uh using line weight in uh, in this case is uh, yeah very useful to simplify things to make it more clear to the viewer because in the end not every design will for example have you know you'll have to you know time to you know render it out beautifully you know uh, unless you're of course working in 3D, then you know it's you can just you know put rendering on and you wait for a couple of hours and it renders for you. Uh, however, I like you know hybrid concepting as well, where I uh, use 3D models, I block them out very fast, so I have the proportions, I can figure out my lighting, I render them out and I can, you know, draw or paint and render on top of it. And uh, knowing the fundamentals, you can make it look like it's, you know, one, um, one uniform piece. It will not look like a cheap ass, you know, Frankenstein together image, but, you know, I just keep the consistency there, work according to the rules of light, according to the foundations. And that is how I am able to solve my visual problems. Yeah. Here I'm like, uh, you know, trying again, you know, to uh, make the tank more physical by making it, you know, sack a little bit through the dirt, through the ground. So even though I will not put it into like a proper environment, I just want that feeling that you know it's uh it's out there it has weight and 
I, I don't know the exact weight of this tank, but for, I think it was around 20 tons. Let, let's see, let's see the weight of this tank. I'm gonna look it up. The weight of the T-34. T-34. Seventy-six. I guess the eighty-five was way heavier. <laughs> I'm tank nerding here. I guess like if you bought a tutorial and you're just like you want just some general knowledge how to draw, I'm ending up talking more about tanks. But this is what it takes, you know. It takes you know the caring and the passion for, you know, observing the world and being able to uh, to make realistic representations on your own. There we go. I think I found it. Let's see if the weight will be there. It's, uh, it's the tank encyclopedia that I'm visiting right now. Hmm. Yeah, strangely enough, the weight is not here. It has the dimensions. Oh, total weight. Yeah, so it's 28 metric tons. So for you guys who are, you know, European, you are used to the metric system, you know exactly that it is, you know, uh, 28,000 kilograms, which is very heavy. Uh, no idea how it is, you know, with the imperial system. Uh, for me, the imperial system is very hard to learn and really not logical, so I just don't even bother. So I'm really sorry. You have to convert it on your own if you're interested in it. But yeah, 28 tons uh, for a tank, it's not that heavy, to be honest. Um, but yeah, it, it will still, you know, be much heavier than, you know, your your car, which is, you know, no more than one ton, right? Like a, a big passenger's car. So, yeah. Basically, it is because of, you know, uh, its size and uh, thick armored plates. If you look at a car, a car has, you know, basically uh, it's made out of, you know, tin can metal, which you can you know, actually bend with your hands, actually. Um, you don't you don't actually do it because cars are expensive. But yeah, the, the material used on cars is very thin. Uh, tanks, well, that's a totally different story, you know. They need to be able to uh, take a punch from, you know, uh, high caliber guns, rocket launchers. And be, of course, you know, um, uh, capable of, you know, withstanding uh, uh, explosives. So, therefore, they are massive, chunky. And the weight increases a lot. Even if, you know, um, Volvos back in the day, the, the car, the car brand, the Swedish car, uh, Volvo... I don't know if they still do it, probably not, but they used to be super heavy because their metal, their their body metal uh, around it was uh, very thick. It was maybe like not even twice uh, the thickness of a regular car, but if you just increase the, the thickness a little bit, um, it really uh, increases the, the size, right? The The weight, I mean. Uh, yeah and this is how I can indicate material in my drawing you know the fenders are you know like for regular thickness you know basically you know the thickness uh, of a car and you know it is more prone to rust and bends it has holes in it as you can see because you know it is being shot at but the main hull, the main body, and the turret, that is, you know, a different story, you know. I am indicating there in, on several occasions, on the corners, on the gun mantlet, uh, around the gun itself. I, you can see how thick, actually, that, um, that armor is. Yeah. Drawing wise again, you know, don't I'm I was talking about the thickness in the material, you know So it again comes, you know, to to caring about what you're drawing and understanding its function Once you know the function like try to 
before you make a study of a vehicle like this, try to immerse yourself by reading about the vehicle and the passion might pop up autom automatically, you know. I task my students sometimes, you know, to uh, make a study of a certain airplane or a helicopter and I give them also the task to, you know, read about it, research. And it just sparks interest because in the end you need that as a concept designer. You need to, you know, pick up any topic, do some research and make your own visual um, representations of it and reinterpretations. Very important. And again, of course, as always, not only restricted to vehicles, right? This is design thinking in general, right? Uh, what I can tell about vehicles, uh, especially in classes, you know, uh, what is specifically uh, subject to vehicles is, you know, how can you play with symmetry, right? Since uh, man-made objects are, you know, most of the time symmetric, how you can play with the technology level, right? So how can you make visual reinterpretations and use the same kind of design language as... Um, um, people were using in the 40s or 50s for example but making it your own design or how to escalate the design sensibility and complexity of something that's more sci-fi right it's all because you know it's all comes also down to you know the mastery of materials right you, you look at the at a tank from pre present day so take for example this from the same series right so this is the t34 and now compare that with the t90 that which is now the current tank that russia is employing in its uh, military you will see um, a uh, a difference in you know not only the shape and the profiling but you know their mastery of the material right so it's well basically it's steel and, and metal and you can see you know how well, they are able to, you know, craft the material now in in a way better optimal shape uh, compared to this crude looking tank. All very important. So these aspects, you know, and I'm just like scratching the surface here because, you know, I can only say so much in an hour and a half video. Uh, and of course, I'm not going to share everything here. In the end, it will be kind of unfair for, you know, the, the students that are actually, you know, paying the, the full bond. But even if I wanted to, it's kind of impossible, right? I can, you know, in a fair way, uh, talk and cover as much as I can here. But in the end, you know, see it as a walkthrough video with, uh, with commentary. Hopefully useful because, you know, I'm rambling on here to myself. Hopefully it's useful. <clears throat> making the wheel in the rear adjusting it to its perspective you know again much easier to do when you're digitally Basically, you can draw an object, select it with a selection tool, um, press Ctrl T, and then you are able to uh, hold Ctrl and drag the corners in perspective. The selection tool is uh, on top. Is uh, when you look at my window, it's that icon which is the third from the top, or you can just press S. So. I never know if I like should share these kind of basic Photoshop, um, um, you know, tools. But since uh, I know my audience is sometimes broad when it comes to uh, videos like this, I'm just making sure that everybody is able to do what I'm doing here. I guess that is also why you're you uh, are watching this in the end. So yeah.
flipping the canvas is control uh, control one or control F1. I found out that it is different for every single version of Photoshop. So you know, make sure in your in your tab, um, you know what shortcut it is. Otherwise, you can just go to and I'm talking out of my head here, but you can go, I think, to image and then there is an option flip horizontally basically it allows you to check out your image in a fresher way yeah you spot mistakes that way basically and your image your design your painting your compositional uh, structure everything should work from both ways I think especially a man-made object like this, it should be proportional to, you know, to the core. And that is what I'm thinking here. So yeah, this is one of the most, uh, one of the most accurate drawings I did. You know, I didn't even went so far, you know, to count the tracks. I mean, what is it? Close to 28, something like that. 30, 30 pieces of tracks, of threads. Not sure, but I'm estimating it. Just pure estimate. I think more than that. If I just count five, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, it might be around 35 um, or 40. Yeah, difficult to say. Yeah. <clears throat> And I guess you can count them, like from the drawing, you can basically count them because I'm trying, of course, to make this drawing as accurate as I can. So every single shape has been drawn out. I'm not leaving anything to too much suggestion. Everything is, uh, is uh, clear enough, I hope. What I'm doing here is I'm using the selection tool, turning a, in your selection tool, you can also, you know, preset your shape. So I'm going for the wheel. Then I fill the wheel with, you know, my, uh, my ink color. I fill the whole shape. You can press stroke, uh, right click on, you know, your uh, selected filled piece. You can click stroke, uh, adjust here, you know, the pixel thickness, you can click okay. And then it subtracts uh, your selection. You can press delete. And then you are left with, you know, a line art wheel uh, with a very accurate line art wheel. So you don't have to, you know, uh, draw that um, by hand, which I sometimes do, sometimes I don't. But in this case, I wanted to have the wheels very accurate. Um, I was feeling rusty that day as well. So I was like, yeah, just make it accurate and just be confident and just be sure that my shapes are correct. Um, making the lines thicker because you know there is like a tear go tire going on or a rubber rim around the wheel and I repeat the same because I know there is like this main knob at the center of the wheel and now I'm having what I said you know a, f a flat representation of the wheel something that I could have done with the tracks as well but I just didn't do it I was drawing the tracks uh, you know from from scratch and uh, this will be example of having the wheels I will copy and paste them now four times in a row and I will then take the whole row and copy paste it and put it according to my uh, perspective on a tank so that is you know definitely a line drawing technique that is uh, worth sharing Actually very easy once you know, you know, the basic Photoshop trick, but it seems to me that not everybody sometimes thinks of it, you know, of the available shortcuts. And maybe it's not entirely a shortcut because it still takes a while, but it, it's definitely faster than drawing all the wheels from scratch and thinking heavily about perspective and keeping all the wheels the same. Because yeah, there's still a lot of foreshortening going on and every every wheel has to be in a different shape anyway from this perspective right so um, here I just did that 
five wheels I scale it down or you know plus minus according to what I have and um, there you go control T holding control and I'm just you know adjusting the corners very fast very handy uh, still some work left because now you have to make those wheels uh, three-dimensional now they're just like flat pieces of, uh, of wheels so I end up spending time on making them three-dimensional and drawing in then all the necessary patterns to which they all uh, which they all need to to look like a wheel <clears throat> adjustments adjustments from now I'm not sure what I'm doing there. I think I'm just, you know, erasing some parts that I'm, I was not happy with. Uh, I need to erase parts of the wheel too, because that, that knob in the middle that sticks out, you know, the frontal part needs to be deleted so I can make it uh, three dimensional, right? Because it's like a, it's like a bulb. Uh, it's not a flat circle within a circle. So here I'm taking, you know, escalating the, the sense of detail. I remember this was a pain in the ass too. It, uh, it really was. And, but again, you know, if you think that I don't struggle, I always struggle with every single drawing, with every single piece. And uh, yeah, if it's 2D, 3D, there's always this sense of struggle. And that always reminds me that, wow, I'm still not drawing enough. I still struggle, right? And I guess I always will have that sense. And that is also what keeps me going. And that is also something that I'm trying to communicate to my students, right? The struggle is always there. Um, you can just make it uh, less by doing it on a frequent basis, by crafting your, um, by developing and crafting your, your skill further and further down the line. Here I'm making the rim. Without like an underlying sketch, right? So you might think like, oh, okay, I maybe I need to establish the segmentations of the of the wheel rim on my bottom sketch. But right now, you know, I am feeling confident that I'll just nail it uh, with one go. You know, working closely with the reference, uh, thinking about perspective all the time. I'm not being taxed by design since it is a study. So I'm just worrying on making it as accurate as I can. Meanwhile, I'm training my design sensibility for when I'm going to design something on my own like this. So, yeah. <clears throat> Evening and out the segment, so you know it needs to be uh pretty uh pretty evened out if you spot mistakes you know always erase them redraw them you know if it's wrong it's wrong just accept it and in the end you learn more uh, of it it is sometimes painful i get it it's even more painful when you don't correct it and you know you get uh, chewed out you know when people say hey you're drunk doesn't make sense you know so uh, put the care in it 
especially when you're making a, a line art study. And you can make studies on different levels, right? You can just train your proportions, make very fast sketches, and you know, train your dynamic sketching abilities at the same time. You can make more detailed line drawings like I'm doing here. You can make um, paintings, studies, you know, how, you know, light hits the surface of, you know, vehicles and approach it in that manner. Or you can make detailed renders like I'm doing in part two of this tutorial. So. <clears throat> and each and every wheel is being taken care of. You know, if, even if it had 10 wheels, go for it and uh, draw it and train your coordination that way. Of course, I'm kind of like contradicting myself here because I didn't. I did not train my coordination fully because my wheels were, you know, um, kind of cheated. Um, however, I just didn't want to risk spending too much time as well. So I just, you know, went, you know, the shortcut way. Yeah. But the tank segments, hey, that was all. That was all me and my hand coordination. So. it's always funny to look back at your own work because uh, obviously i'm you know when i was drawing this in class i was you know talking to my students so you know i'm recording this with the audio off and then later i record the audio on top of it that is also another reason why i'm speeding these videos a little bit up because you know um being pressured by time some of these sketches, they uh, these drawings, they take you know two hours, three hours, and this one has been down to two hours. So yeah, the the clip speed is you know um, at some segments it's I think in the end it was one on one. In some some segments I was speeding up uh, up to three times, right? So you don't see it faster than that for sure. I guarantee uh, the real time thing to three hours. The recording is two hours and. 10 minutes something like that so um, basically I think up to five times you can really see what's going on in clear detail uh, with the drawing as long as you realize you know that um, that you know I'm not as fast as you know uh, as in the recording <clears throat> and I guess you know line drawing takes the most time it's maybe not as, uh, maybe don't have the same kind of rewarding feeling because, you know, people tend to, you know, lean towards, you know, beautiful landscapes and paintings. But yeah, what is concept art? How do you communicate certain details? How do you communi communicate props design, interiors, you know, when everything needs to be designed from scratch? It is still, you know, the best way to communicate your design dynamically and accurately and according to your own 100% design language. Right, and that's what we are training here with these drawings. Later on, when you master this, it will become so much easier when you're, you know, about to photo bash things and you can like mix and mash your techniques. <clears throat> the wheel in the front here is, uh, is different than the wheels, the main wheels. Um, the, the bigger the five ones for the service so I am uh, I was not able to copy and paste anything here except for the main knob maze basically uh, perhaps in the middle uh, but I just went you know from scratch you know fuck it
I squint my eyes and I look from far away, there's not much difference in the progress sometimes. So yeah, I'm sometimes afraid that these videos are a little bit tedious, but hey, you know, it's line drawing. It's um, If there are some details that need to be taken care of, I have to draw them in. Again, using line weight to uh, my advantage to simulate uh, shadows in my piece, right? Again, erasing what is not needed because of the three-dimensional aspect that I'm introducing in each and every wheel. You might ask yourself why I'm not just copying and pasting the segment, the 3D segment of the wheel into the other. Well, the answer is that it will be, it will look off anyway, and I would spend time adjusting and redrawing basically anyway, because um, of the perspective aspect here, right? You might think it's the same, but it's not. There's more foreshortening going on in the back. The perspective changes slightly. And when you compare the frontal wheel to the wheel all the way in the back, you can see that the ellipse is way sharper on the back than the front. Basically, that has to do with foreshortening. It has to do with, you know, the items, uh, you know, go that go in the distance are also becoming smaller. And yeah, that wheel that is closer to the camera is also more flatter towards the camera lens, basically, right? It also depends on the type of lens that you're using. Uh, yeah, all these little things that you have to remember and, and think of, right? So that is why I didn't, you know, copy the segments because uh, basically I could do that, you know, you can totally do that. And uh, I would spend time. Uh, like I said, redrawing it anyway. And now I, you know, drew it again. Uh, I see, you know, that my knob is not entirely the same, but oh well, fuck it, right? Can't have it all, I guess. <clears throat> but it went fast, right? It went way faster than the first wheel. So uh, again, it's an example of, you know, training your coordination, training your drawing abilities. And, you know, within one piece, you can improve already so much so much so um, you can see sometimes you know the the rewarding uh, during your piece and imagine you doing these kinds of studies every day yeah that's why i like can almost have no excuses for people that say you know like yeah but you need to know the special talent for it you mean oh the special talent like what do you exactly mean by that that you know i have some is it like in your mind some kind of magical power that, you know, it's, yeah. I think in the end, if you possess, you know, like uh, average intelligence, you know, um, we are not rocket scientists. All it takes is, you know, being curious ab about the world, being an effective observer. Uh, of course, having passion for uh, design, having a passion for the artistic value, of course, and, and art in general. Um, and yeah, be be self-disciplined, right? Yeah. Be self-disciplined. And uh, yeah, at our school, we all forge that in an advanced basis um, from the basics up to, you know, what is needed in our industry currently. Yes, I totally know how it feels. I think if I was in a proper school, I would achieve my goal way faster than on my own. That's the truth, you know, being in an environment with your peers, um, having teachers that are able to share the knowledge properly and according to, you know, the industry st standards and trends, uh, that's way more helpful, of course. But unfortunately, no such school in Europe was uh, available up till now. Yeah. The beauty about um, the, the big benefit also about drawing digitally is you can, you know, zoom in and zoom out on demand. And you can see your proportions from, uh, from distance as well as from up close.
you don't have to you know tax your eyes by you know going too close on the page and you know or you know take a whole step back you can sit in one place and just move the canvas according to your wishes <clears throat> I am reminding here myself of the pain here. Well, not pain, but it's just that struggle that, you know, I know the result. I know this is nothing exciting. It is just another wheel. But in order to have that consistency in my drawing, I need to draw it in, right? Uh, I didn't even know if I was counting those rims. Hold on. I see one, two, three, hold on, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, hold on, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine, okay, the other one, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, so this one is ten, <laughs> this one is ten, and the other one in the, the, like the, the one that I just was drawing right now has 10 rims. The other one next to it has nine, but oh well, who cares? Not as accurate as I thought. It's all right. I see that this will slightly off perspective. Yeah, good thing I corrected it. I was afraid I will not, and I was seeing it from the start, and I was hoping to that I will correct it in the recording, and I did. Still not perfect though, I think, oh well. So yeah, uh, more corrections to come when I'm going to render this one. Uh, there is a main thing that I forgot about this, this, this uh, study, which, which is the um, ventilation system and the air intake on the engine deck. Basically, from this perspective, it is um, not super visible because it's the area between the barrel and the turret on top of the main hull. Uh, but still, a portion of it should be visible. Uh, that change has been done in the final rendering. It's a minor detail. I might now be talking. You don't even know what I'm talking about. But it's the area on top of the tank between the turret and the fuel barrels on the side. That is like the small gap that, you know, you see like a flat area and there should be like an engine. The, the engine deck should be a little bit elevated because of uh, air intakes and, air ha and uh, engine hatches. Maybe you should play uh, like a game, find the differences and then um, take the rendered version uh, and compare it with the line drawing and maybe you'll see it. I'm kidding, don't do it, it's probably super boring. What I do encourage you to do, to do studies on your own like this, all right? Um, of course, the the most amount, the, mo the best encouragement uh, that I have is, you know, if you are an aspiring concept artist then you know uh, i really advise you to um, sign up for one of the classes or uh, of or our whole term um, if somehow you're not able to make it because of you know it, it takes some relocation uh, budget issues then at least try to do this at home um, these videos some of them are for free on my gumroad on my art station on you know all the other portals that might be also become available in the future and uh, and also you know check out um, uh, other tutorials you know there are a lot of artists right now that are doing these kinds of tutorials so I really encourage you to uh, to to try that of course everybody has a different style of teaching and talking and channeling the knowledge but still you know try it out you know it's basic you're paying what there are mostly between three and fifteen dollars uh, some of them are even free like mine um, and you can just check them out, right? And if you end up paying, you know, you pay you pay more on nights out when you're out drinking with your friends, you know. Or yeah, so no excuses there, I guess.
Small break from talking. I guess this tank is almost coming to an end. When I'm looking at the timing, we're one hour and 51 minutes in. And the whole recording is two hours and eight minutes. So yeah, uh, what can we learn from this, right? Uh, I always like to, you know, talk about, you know, some, con about some, you know, concluding factors, like a conclusion. Um, before we jump into design, very important to master the general knowledge about our current world. Uh, when it comes to vehicles, it is very important to embrace the technology that we have right now. Uh, study it, right? Um, know roughly the order of our technology, as in, you know, what came after what, right? So steam engines first uh, gasoline diesel engines later um, then of course you know in airplanes they were supercharged with compressors to you know uh, increase the air intake but that also resulted in making the engines more airtight so uh, civilization was forced to use more uh, more sophisticated and uh, better quality materials to make the engines more airtight because you increase the pressure in your engines when you're when you're mixing the fuel with the air and you increase the amount of air that pumps into the engine you have to make the engine of better quality and that of course comes down into mastery of your uh, materials uh, then we had the jet engines that came after that and of course jet engines are exposed to extreme temperatures so you need you know special alloys special materials special metals that are able to um, withstand these extreme temperatures for you know an extended amount of time so that's why first jet fighters uh, like the ME262 was prone to, you know, just flying. We being able to just stay in the air for one hour or something, and then it had to land to cool off its, uh, um, its, its jet engine parts because, you know, they were subject to overheat. Um, and of course, later on, you know, uh, electrical engines, we might, we might say that electric engines came after that, but, you know, uh, electric engines have been around, you know, for a very long time. Even the first cars were, um, they were experienced with, uh, were experiencing with um, uh, electric engines. But, you know, the, the, the problem with that was, you know, the, the mileage uh, lifespan of the battery. And basically we went for gasoline later on because it was uh, more reliable. You didn't have to charge up that often, you know, you just, um, you can drive as long as depending on how much your um, fuel, uh, fuel tank was, right? So, yeah, uh, so that is what we can learn all of, all of it, you know, um, learning and observing the technology of our own world. Then, of course, it trains our design capability. So uh, this tank has is consisting of major shapes. Try to digest them. Try to see that, you know, it's actually consisting of three kinds of shapes. It has the tracks with the wheels, then the main hull body, which is basically in the shape of a pyramid that has been, um, you know, put into like a rectangular form and then cut in half, right? So the corners are like meeting are going to one central point each and every line on every corner so that is why you see a different slope on the side of the tank and a different kind of uh, slope on the tank hatch on the frontal body 
So you might think that, you know, oh, my, my drawing abilities are just off, but you know, that's the actual shape of the tank. The slope just increases because it is sloped on both angles, not only on one. And in the end, it's also, you know, it's a very, very good training for your fundamentals, right? Understanding perspective, uh, foreshortening in your shapes, so shape relationships, uh, trains uh, the proportions. Did I say that? Uh, I think I did. And uh, yeah, your drawing coordination in the end, you know, the way you put on lines, you're building up your... Uh, confidential aspect of drawing so even if you know how to put it on canvas uh, you'll always struggle to have that um, sensibility of uh, transferring what you have in your head under a canvas just as I have here right my my segmentation of the track here was not entirely put into perspective i had to select it and readjust it back into perspective as you could see so <clears throat> making the same segmentations of the track a pattern as on the other side very much subject to foreshortening um, you know the track that i'm now working on now that goes below that is even more foreshortened so i'm just like indicating it with a couple of dots no need to go in there and like you know make the whole foreshortened same pattern in an extreme way our brain will kind of you know take care of that on filling that information in automatically and of course i spent less detail than on the same side of the tracks as that is closer to the camera you know it is sometimes good to let go of that complexity on the other side since it is symmetrical anyway the wheel wheels they will be visible from this angle <clears throat> yeah and think about you know which your dry line drawing coordination how to indicate your materials in the best way you can so I even I'm even in even indicating as you can see here like rust patterns and streaks and um, and some weathered effects on the tank without it being a painting and it just increases the believability and the richness right um, but um, you know crafting your skill is one thing but without caring without necessary caring you will just not. Uh, you will just not get there in my opinion. In the end, it really comes down to um, really have much passion and love for this kind of work. So, yeah. <clears throat> Kept my image here like really one-on-one. -on -one. I think uh, things that could have been done better is uh, and I kind of like mastered that. Uh, I, I found a better way to make those tracks much faster. So uh, more tutorials, more line drawing tutorials will follow, uh, will follow up so you can also see my progress. And you can see that, you know, even for somebody that, you know, I've been doing this for, you know, every day since 2011, you know, making drawings, making sketches. Um, I've been since 2011 a full-time concept artist, but before that, of course, I was uh, making, you know, concept art and forging my portfolio to, you know, get a job. But since 2011, I'm really drawing every day and I'm still improving. I still feel like I'm nowhere when I want to be. Uh, and, and with that kind of mindset as well, uh, you'll keep progressing. I guess it's like a mixed feeling between 
a feeling of feeling down because you don't ever feel you know like you're good enough but at the same time you will see how you grow because you feel the improvement at the same time and uh, now i'm just also feel extremely lucky that i'm able to teach and that, that i get the i got the feedback uh, back from the from you know the from the internet and you know from the audience that they want to know more about concept art and how i tackle it and uh, yeah it's a super rewarding feeling so taking care here more on the wheels taking more care than i would actually <laughs> thought like i don't remember uh, making these details by now i'd like call it done but you know Ah, uh, there is some final details to take care of. The fuel barrel. I was thinking about these, you know, functionality fuel barrels. So, you know, even though it's, uh, well, what can I say? Uh, it's kind of handy when you have fuel barrels. Uh, spare, you know, spare fuel if you want to go further, but they are very much exposed, right? So un unless the tank is, you know, not exposed to, you know, a lot of, you know, combat, these barrels would survive. Otherwise, it's a waste of fuel, I think. <clears throat> Here I'm making the mounts on the armor. And this kind of detail also helps to represent the slopeness um, of the surface that these mounts are mounted on, right? So it helps me to indicate and enrich the believability of, you know, what the shape of this, um, what the angle of this surface is. Of course, it is also being helped by the fact that I'm adding in those rust streaks so that rust streaks and weathering effects are also according to the angle that i'm drawing them in so that is another reason why i'm uh, why i am making uh, uh, these kinds of effects multiple effects uh, multiple reasons why show the materials even better show the form show the angle uh, make it more rich, make it more believable. Here I'm adding uh, an interesting detail, you know, that one of those hatches are open. It like sprung open because of shock or, you know, yeah. Adds a little bit of storytelling, basically. And that is what those rust streaks are also doing, right? That, that that weathering effect, you're increasing the storytelling. You know, you're telling basically the audience, okay, this tank has gone through some combat, you know. It has been beaten up, it saw some battle. It It is not like not new straight from the factory. Uh, I always liked it about military vehicles, you know. They're not meant to, you know, be shiny and beautiful. They, they tell a story. They tell a story of, you know, being tired of the war. They tell a story of, you know, adventure and uh, maybe heroism or, you know, uh, yeah. Now it's all about the final details, you know. If there are things that I'm not happy with, I, you know, I change them. I, I make fixes. I zoom out. I see the whole piece. And uh, in the end, that was the recording, I guess, guys. I would like to thank you for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. And I'll see you in the next tutorials. Thanks and bye-bye.